Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm here with Journey. And today I am demonstrating a couple of grooming essentials for as if we are getting ready for a show. I have Journey here. Um, she is what we are guesstimating um, 14 years old. Um, as you can see, she is left uh, um, kept natural. So we are gonna go through these as if we were going to do them, but we are not going to actually do them. So I'm going to go through them and walk you through them as if we were going to actually be doing them. Um, first, I'm going to demonstrate um, what we'll be doing on her mane um, as if I was going to be pulling her mane and then banding it. I actually thought I had a pulling comb and I was just at the tack shop where I would have bought one. But I have um, this little handy dandy. So I'll demonstrate um, for the, what I, how I would use a pulling cone on her natural mane. And if you want to come up this way, I'll demonstrate. So you, when you're pulling the horse's mane, you never want to do it in the same exact area repetitively. You want to work up and then back down. Um, even though their crest is supposed to be quote unquote numb, when you're pulling, um, it can still get, you know, they can still feel it and it can still get, I would say like feel raw almost. So I always work one section at a time and then go back down. So I would start with like this section here, a small section. I would tease it up as so. And then I would take my pulling comb. I would get a small section and then I wrap it around and then I would pull. And then I would do as so and I would keep going up until I get it the length that I want and then um, how I want it to look. And then I work myself back down and then I would take the um, trimmers or clippers or scissors to kind of line it up, but then I would tease it so that way it still didn't look like exactly perfect because you know, you still want it to look somewhat like natural, if you will. Then I would take, if I were to band, whoop, I need my assistant, Taylor. Come my daughter, she's 10 years old. I would use the color of the horse's mane. So this horse is black. Um, if I were to be banding, I would use black ones. But I have a 10 year old, so we have festive have things. black ones. So. Oh, you do? Yeah. We have black ones, but we're using colorful ones today. We're very festive. So, I just need this one. I would separate a so. So, we're really dusty here in Missouri. It's been winter. So there's no way for us to give baths right now, so excuse the dusty horse. I would separate like so. And then, and this band didn't work. Taylor, can I have the bands, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I need airtight containers for it. Oh, really? Now, typically, I use braiding, and I use, um, I do braiding for the mane and the tail when I go into competition with the yarn, but this is what we got today so and she's natural so i would do bands and then i would do separate them accordingly and then bands please taylor and of course the horse's mane will be washed not conditioned because that would be a pain And then I would just continue to work my way down all the way until I got to the forelock and then the forelock would be done itself. So that would be pulling and banding. The next thing I'm going to show you all is um, hoof picking and then the conditioner. I have horse and shoe, uh, horse, horse shoe or secret, excuse me. You can buy it in the pellet or you can buy it for the conditioner. For this purpose, we're using the conditioner. Um, if I were to go to a horse show, I would use um, horse clear or hoof clear or the black shine. 
Um, for her, her case, we would use clear because she has four different color hooks. So I would use all four different, um, I would use all clear on the front and the back. But if you want to come around here, I'll show you how to properly um, pick the horse's feet. Um, the other thing is too, I've actually already done Thrush Buster and I've actually already done her conditioner on her feet, but I'll show you exactly how I would do it. So I would pinch the chestnut, lean into it, keep your toes square and away from underneath if she were to, you know, put her feet down. Brush all the debris because the last thing you want is to put all of that hay back into your hoof conditioner or Venice Turpentine. I'm gonna unscrew this, but you can use your feet. Be resourceful. Do it so. Put it right here. Now, Venice Turpentine. Never put it on the horse's frog. Never put it on the frog, because you never want the shock absorber to become hard. Conditioner, fine. You can put it on the frog. Good girl. But never put Venice Turpentine on the horse's frog. Big no-no. Mental restraint, perfect. Time to show you all. She moved. Anytime a horse moves their feet, I'm gonna put them right back where I found them because that is me having control over the horse's feet. Good girl. Didn't even touch the lead rope or the halter. I just moved her by the pinch of the neck or the chest. I can also move her this way by pressure. I don't want her to step on this stuff. She might have a blow up. That's not good. There's the mentor strength. I was going to come back. in two, maybe, or she'll make a liar of me. There she goes. It's all going back and processing into the brain. Up, up. Thank you. The next thing we're going to do is clippers. She's all natural. We're not going to actually clip her. Um, so I'm going to show you how I would acclimate her or another horse to using the clipper. Um, desensitization, habitualization, um, you always put your mindset into what that horse is thinking, okay? You bring that natural environment into a domesticated environment. Horses are a prey animal, right? So you wanna make it as safe and comfortable for that horse as possible. So um, if you're comfortable, you're calm, they're gonna be comfortable, they're gonna be calm. Because if you're feeling calm, they don't think what is this person worried about? Why is their heart rate 100 miles an hour? What's gonna come and attack them, right? Um, and so they're like, whatever. So if I were to turn this on, she might be okay. I don't know, she's never been around clippers before. But first, I'm gonna turn them off. Let her smell them, hands down. I'm not a big scary bear that's gonna come and like attack her. Good girl. We play what's called the friendly game. Thank you, Pat Pirelli, for that one. Representing Pat Pirelli. I love him. Love Monty Roberts. Love Pat Pirelli. Just get her used to it. Good girl. These are good girls. This constant, this positive reinforcement, right? That's what we want to do. When we have a horse's eye, and we have a horse's mind, She's worried about something out there. There's her, there's her eye. We have that white part of their eye focused on us. We have their mind. She's like, oh, not so bad. I don't know about that. But I would do this. I would just keep doing this until she had the idea of it's not so bad. And that's okay. 
She's new to everything. She has not been worked with in her owners here. She's not been worked with in how long? At least four years. Four years. So I think for not being worked with in four years, Journey is doing fantastic. And I think my classmates and Dr. Davison will say it also. So her owner has done well with what she, the resources she has, has had. There you go. See, she's willing. She's accepting. And I'm going to take it back because I'm not going to push her. I'm not going to push her out of her comfort zone. Right? And that's when she looks in shoes and says, okay, she's not forcing you. Right? And you would do that repetitively. It doesn't, we didn't get here overnight. So it's not going to happen overnight. It takes time. It takes repetitiveness. It takes commitment. It takes consistency. It takes persistency, just like a child. If you don't have that, it, it's not going to work. Right? So one more thing to show you guys. Um, while we use positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, people think negative reinforcement is um, punishment. Wrong. Negative reinforcement is moving away from pressure. Then you have penalty. Then you have punishment. Um, punishment should only be happening within three seconds of something negative happening. Positive reinforcement should be happening immediately within three seconds of something good happening and it should happen 16 times for that to negate something bad that has happened in that horse's life. So it's going to take a lot of effort. Um, but it's a good girl. Huh. She's done really well. Now if this horse was mouthy, I obviously would not be offering treats by hand. I would put it in her feed bucket. I would do lateral flexion with it. I would do something as suppose just using my hands. But um, the last thing that I have to show you guys for the video um, is using the chain over the nose, the lead shank. I did it a couple times before this video. As you can see, she's a really calm horse, but the, the noise of the chain is a little, a little much for her still. So I'm gonna be calm and quiet, use soft hands. We're gonna go through the lead line hole, through the side. Now, if I had a longer chain, um, typically when I'm showing in halter, I put it across the nose. And instead of clipping here, I actually normally go up and clip on this side. That is typically used for your um, showmanship and your halter. So that way, when you're showing, you actually have four inches of lead right here. And then when you're leading off, as so, and then you have room to be able to show your horse and keep your feet away from in front of your horse's feet and still have ultimate control of your horse. Um, this lead shank and the halter I do have, don't show that, but I still have ultimate lead control with this lead shank. And she did fantastic. So good job, Journey. Thanks, guys. I hope you have a great day.